Hi, uh, this is a quick introduction and presentation of the current density analyzer software, which is a Python-based software designed and aimed for a quick and easy analysis of the current density distribution in AC current carrying conductors in 2D cross-section cases. The idea of the software is to make it uh, quick and easy for a comparison cases and for some power losses and analysis and similar ones. So let's get to it. As this is a Python script based project, we are running it with the Python command and the name of the script after that. Doing that, we get the main window of the program. Let's enlarge it. So the main window is contained of three areas, the drop down menu, the canvas area in the middle, and the right hand panel with some activities in it. In general, how it works. In the canvas area, we can sketch our geometry. The simplest way to sketch something and the way to start work on it is to select which phase of the three phase system we're going to sketch a phase A, phase B or the phase C. The canvas is divided into a squares. This is a grid which is representing at the same time our mesh for the analysis. Currently the grid size is 10 millimeters which means each square is 10 by 10 millimeters. So if we draw a bus bar of the phase A, selecting the phase a from the active operation and just you know click and drag to draw it. So we have a bar. We can take a look at the view menu and open CAD window which is a Matplotlib based display window that shows uh, what we just draw uh, but with respect to the geometry and some dimensions and so on. So it could be handy if you can if you want to check uh, the sanity of your of, of your sketch. So we have one bar here. We can, for example, say that we have like three bars in our system for the phase A. Now we can draw something for the phase B, and we can just you know select the B over here, and let's say we are drawing the phase B. Uh, the interface can be a little bit luggish here, as I am recording the screen at the same time. So we have right now two phases. So let's do the same for the phase C. However, let's do it using a different tool. From the active operations, we can select the copy tool, which is the one in the middle. And then let's drag a rectangle around the phase A. The market at the yellow cells were copied to the clipboard. So now we can pass to them. So we can pass to them and uh, software automatically switch the operation mode to pass from keyboard. There are several past mode available. So we can paste it as uh, just as we copy it. And we're going to get the phase A here. We can with this basic mode, when you pasted it, you passed only the data. You don't pass the empty cells that were selected. If you want to pass with the empty cell, we can switch to the second pass mode over here, which is a full pass mode. And when we do it, you can see that we've been passing as well the, uh, the emptiness, which could be helpful sometimes. But we made a lot of mess, so we can clean it up. So the one way of cleaning it up is to, is to use a right mouse button and drag around, which erase whatever is under the cursor. Uh, the other method could be we can take the select tool grab some empty stuff, select the paste mode with the emptiness and just paste nothing in this place. So let's grab the selection tool again. Let's grab our face A. And now we can paste it, switching the active elements to different face. So let's select from the paste mode, paste as face C and click here. So we have our system is A, B and C red green and blue face. So we can do an analysis of this. However, we see that our geometry is approximated right now with pretty chunky squares, with most probably with 
uh, effectively gives us not that precise results of our analysis. We can increase the precision uh, by increasing the uh, number of elements in the mesh. In other words, we can make those squares smaller. Let's go to the geometry menu and click the subdivide. As visible, it's been divided to smaller chunks. And at the same time, the size of what particular chunks get uh, changed to 5 millimeters. We can as well from the navigation pane on the right hand bottom here, take a zoom and pan around to see what's happening. We can of course edit anything, copy and paste in the zoom mode as well. But let's get back to the full view right now. So we have defined the simple cross section of the three phase system. What can we do with it? We can go to the analyze menu and we can select from the power losses solver, electrodynamics forces solver and equivalent impedance model. The power losses solver solves for the current density distribution. Let's jump into it. When we click it, we get the power losses solver. The geometry data were pre-prepared and transferred to the solver window. So they are available right here. Thus, there is a whole bunch of parameters to be set up here. Uh, but the most important are the f is the first row and the second one. So the first row describes the current in each phase, phase A, phase B and phase C. And the set is done by six parameters separated by semicolon. The first parameter is the RMS value of the current in phase A. The second is the electrical angle in degrees shift for the phase A. The second parameter is the RMS value of current in phase B. And the next parameter is the electrical angle in degrees for the phase B. And the same for the phase C. So right now we have a symmetrical three phase system with one kilo ampere in each phase shifted by 0, 120 and 240 degrees. The frequency of the analysis system is set to be 50 Hertz and the conductor temperature is set to 140 degrees Celsius. It is important to know that the temperature of the conductor impacts the resistivity of the material and since this all assumes that we are working with copper here, uh, it has an impact on the current density distribution. So let's have those three set it up. Let's click the set the parameters. There are several more parameters, but they are related to very simple uh, thermal uh, model that is being used in the, in the software. And let's just skip it for now. The last but not least is the length of the analysis. So in general, we're going to get the power losses as output, but the power losses are calculated for the given length. Here, by default, it's one meter. So having that all done, let's click the calculate. It's going to take some time as uh, several matrix equation of complex number need to be solved. But after some moments, we're going to get our windows. There is a two windows with the displays. One of them is the temperature rise, which we're going to skip for a moment. And the second one is the main output window with power losses and current density distributions. So we get a current density displacement map in a form of the colors here with the expected accuracy according to the mesh we created. So we get some general information. What was the setup of this analysis? It was 50 Hertz, description of the currents at 140 degrees Celsius uh, conductor, copper conductor temperature and one meter length. The overall power losses for one meter length are 45 watts and phase A have 13.46 watts power losses, phase B 17.8 and phase C 13.74 respectively. So we can learn a lot from it. We can see what are the, you know, what are the current density in the particular places of our system. And if we can, uh, for example, plan to uh, optimize the cross section of the, of the conductors. But let's see what's happened if we increase uh, the precision of the solution. So let's close it back. Let's close our solver window and we are back to the main window of the geometry. It's important to remember that the geometry is sent once to the solver. So if we change the geometry without closing the solver window, it will not be reflected. The changes will not be reflected in a solver. So as we are here, let's just do the following. Let's just 
subdivided again. So as visible, we have now we've been like doubling the precision of the system. So let's do what we just did before with the new with the new geometry precision. So get back to the power losses. We get our window. Uh, let's keep the default settings as they are exactly as in the previous case and let's click the calculate. However, this time the calculation is going to take a longer time as we significantly increase the number of elements that need to be taken into consideration. So let's look at the command window of the console in the back. Uh, this stuff here are information that's been uh, delivered by the uh, by the solver as it's working and they may be useful in some cases. For example right now we have 1440 elements uh, to be analyzed which means each uh, we have we have sets of, of 1440 equations of complex number that need to be solved and due to the fact that we are working with the definition of current values uh, due to the fact uh, that we need to adjust the voltage in, this, in the solution to get those currents as assumed, those equations need to be solved twice. So it takes some time. Let's wait for it. And it took roughly about three or two or three minutes to get us here. So, as visible, let's get rid of the temperature windows for a moment and take a look at what we have right now. So, clearly visible, our results are getting much more precise right now. Which is important uh, is to get uh, the grasp of the idea how deep would the with the subdividing it's required, how deep we need to go. Because we get a much nicer display uh, when we have more elements, of course. But when we take a look at the results in terms of power losses, they are pretty much close to what was happening before. So it's gonna be a game of trade-off. Uh, precision versus time of calculations. However, for the systems like that, we're still talking about the times calculated, uh, counted in, in, in in single minutes which is not that crazy so okay we have this thing here happening okay so this is what we get from the from the main pro solver that we have here for the power losses calculations in the window we get as well the results in the form of text for easy copy and paste for other users if we close the if we close our result windows, the, the, the graph windows, we can just click show results back again to get them back without uh, recalculating the entire stuff. If we are playing around with the temperature stuff with a very basic model based on thermal network theory, uh, we can just do changes over here and do recalculate temperatures, which doesn't require to recalculate the power losses, so it's very fast. So let's take a look at temperature windows for a second. This stuff just do a very simple calculations. As you can see, the solver identify each bar. There is a specific algorithm of dividing the draw geometry to separate conductors and put uh, numbers of them. Those are the one in the square brackets here. So we can see that it's been calculated for some given temperature rises. Uh, and those temperatures are pretty low uh, because we have a huge cross-section for 1000 amperes current. So, how it works? It just takes the area of cooling that is for the particular bar, which is taken from the parameter length, multiplied by the analysis length, and do the calculations. Each bar power losses versus the a very simple heat exchange equation, which use the heat exchange coefficient equals to 7 watt per meter square Kelvin 
and thermal conductivity of 0.25. So we have the results like that. So the maximum temperature rise over here is 5.6, which by the way can be read from the bottom right, ho right hand corner if we hover around the area. So let's do like this. Since our heat exchange uh, parameter was at the level of 7 HTC and gives us around 5 Kelvin of rise, let's make it a level of 1 and see what's going to happen. So let's set those parameters and recalculate the temperature rises. And we're going to get our result windows back quite instantaneously. And as visible, we have dropped down the heat exchange ratio and the temperatures went up. So this as well could be used for some a quick uh, like engineering guidance from the perspective of expected temperatures. OK, so let's get out of those windows and as well from the silver. And let's get back to our and let's get back to our geometry. Let's to make speed up the things. Let's just click geometry and simplify to get rid of some of those uh, additional, let's say, informations. In general, let's make it even simplified. So this is the basics we can have. So what else we can do with it? The analyze menu gives us as well the electrodynamic forces solver. Let's kick it in. This one is very simple. How what do we define is the length of the analysis for, for the entire system and the current for phase A, phase B and phase C in kiloamps. So this is a static solver. So it is solves it assuming the uniform current density distribution in the entire phase and uh, just analyze one moment in time giving us the forces vectors acting on each bar and each phase as a total when such a currents are applied. So let's give it a try. And as we can see, we get a new window here. So what do we have here? We do have overall display of the force density, which means uh, the force magnitude value uh, per area of each element. And we get as well the market arrows, which shows the forces acting on each phases, which is not the, for the particular bars over here, but for the entire phase. So as this is a spot in time, uh, typical for the sh three phase short circuit, we have the situations that two of those phases are repelling each other and the forces acting on the third one are just get it uh, sum to zero in geometrical sum. But what if we want to know what are the forces acting and in which directions precisely for the particular bars? Let's just drop the graphical window and get back to this result over here. We can see that we have phase A, phase B and phase C vectors explicitly state for the X and Y direction. But when we get back to our terminal window of the application, which we have over here, it can be seen that we get results for each bar separately, which can be useful when we do some analysis uh, or we need some input for some mechanical analysis, let's say. Okay. So let's get back again to the main window and having this geometry, let's check out the last solver, which is equivalent impedance model one. Just running it up. It's ask you about what is the frequency your system is operating as you, here. And everything's here in this software. Assume that we are working with the sinusoidal shape currents. What's your conductor temperature? And it's assume all conductors are made out of copper. And you just set the temperatures here. And when you click calculate, it's going to do some calculations. And it will give you single line diagram parameters for phase A, phase B and phase C. So those are pretty much symmetrical in this particular case. As you can see, we have like 12.71 micro ohms and each phase is about 0.8 microhands in uh, inductance. So let's make some different 
uh, geometry to see if this is going to change. Let's get crazy. Let's make file, new geometry. Yep, we want to have a new geometry and let's just do something which makes virtually no sense, but let's just do something. Uh, so we have face A. Phase B. And it's a little bit luggish because I'm recording the screen. And let's go for the face C. And in general, this makes it pretty huge. If we take a look at this CAD window, we can clearly see that we are talking about a lot of millimeters, you know, uh, size in millimeters. You can see that we are talking about 300 versus 150, it's 150 millimeters somewhere around, which is a huge set. However, it doesn't have to be like that. Let's say this reflects the geometry we have, but the scale is off. Let's just pick the size of one square and make it a uh, one millimeter. And as soon as you click out of it, it's going to change. So now when we go to the CAD view, we are operating from you know 12 to 36 millimeters here. So we change the size, we scale the entire system. Uh, okay, so we have it just like that right now over here. So for the sake of the speed of the video, I'm not going to subdivide it to smaller pieces. Let's just get back to the equivalent impedance model solution and give it a try. And as you can see, we have different numbers for each phase right now, which is pretty obvious as the geometry and the interactions between them from the electromagnetic perspective is going to be completely different. So this is what's possible to be calculated and done here as well. And those values are going to get more precise when we subdivide the stuff more. We shall be able to do it here. Yeah, and we encounter kind of a issue because the subdivide is locked that we cannot go lower than one millimeter for the sake of typical applications. This may be changed in the configuration uh, with the new releases uh, as well. But if we want to subdivide it more, we can do a trick with, let's say, back to, this is a 10 millimeter stuff. Then we can go to geometry, subdivide, we get both of them and those are five millimeters. But we can say this is not 5, this is 0.5 millimeter, and we are good to go. If we go for the cut view again, we're still rolling the right size, small size. So let's just run the impedance model. It's going to take longer as we have now a lot more elements to be analyzed. And I can see we get the results but they are not getting that much crazy different from the previous one. So again, it's a game of trade-off, how precise we want to be and what we are expecting to get at the end of the day. So in basics, this is how it works. Just to summarize, we can draw elements by just by moving our mouse with the left button pressed around. We can select them, then we can pass them, passing them just only the active elements. We can pass the active elements with the white ones, with the emptiness. We can paste them, switching to active elements to different phases, like for the phase B, for the phase C. We can select to paint with the emptiness or doing it by right-clicking. We can subdivide the geometry to get more mesh to work with and get better results. We can simplify it if we don't need it. We can simplify it even more, but we're going to lose some of the features. We have power losses solver, we have electrodynamic solver, and we have impedance model solver. As well, there are some options for the geometry like pattern swap, but let's not uh, care about them right now. I think it's going to be enough. The video probably is 
to log already. So thank you for your attention. I hope you will find it useful. There is a GitHub repository with this tool. It's been created as an open source software under the MIT license. You can reach me on the GitHub uh, if you have any questions and uh, feature requests or if you want to participate in development. Thank you. Take care. Bye.